Welcome to the second half of the video on finding the reaction in the cable BC for a bent rod ABD. We talked a lot about this rod and its different reactions in the first half of this, which was the lesson 12 homework vector methods. We're now going to see about how we could find the reaction in cable TB or cable B uh, using just scalar methods. And again, we want to try to solve this in just one equation. Now, I'll be honest with you, typically in three-dimensional problems, trying to find the reactions at one point tend to be pretty tough by scalar methods doing what we're going to do. For this particular problem, the geometry works out that it's not too shabby. But a lot of times, you do need to solve multiple equations of equilibrium and then solve them simultaneously to get one of your unknown reactions. But we got lucky on this problem. But again, I want to remind you, we do have six unknowns, we have six equations of equilibrium, and so that makes our lives a whole lot easier if we did want to find all six reactions. The two in the journal bearing AZ and AY, the three at the ball socket DX, DY, DZ, and of course the one tension TB. TB does have three components, one in the X, Y, and Z, but it they all are a component of one force with a known direction. So that's great. And don't forget, as we talked about in the last first half of this example, the bar, bent bar AB, has been aligned such that uh, you don't have any moments occurring in that journal bearing at A. So whew, we uh, at least are statically determined on this problem. Okay, so if we're going to try to solve this with scalar methods, again, we do need to remember that when you have moments, we can sum moments um, about an axis, and we can still try to sum moments about axis AD, just like we did in the first example. So we've drawn that green line in our free body diagram from A to D. But if we're going to do this, we've got to find those perpendicular distances, because when you're using scalar methods, our equations are force times distance, and it's always a perpendicular distance. So we can still use our axes AD, but we do need to then see what are the perpendicular distances for our different components of the tension in B and our weight that's applied at E. So let's start with E. That's a little bit easier. And Remember, it's a perpendicular distance from anywhere on the line of action. And so if we look at our line of action, it's just in the direction of E or Z. And so that's pretty handy. And so what we see is that we can draw anywhere from that line of action a line back to AD, to our line AD. And let's stop and think about this for a sec. The entire bar, ABD, lies in the XY plane. That also means that the axis AD lies in the XY plane. Our force applied at E acts just in the Z direction. So any line I draw from point E back to the AD axis will also lie in the XY plane. And so I can just draw a line straight back from E until I hit AD perpendicularly. And that's always our goal, right? We're not going to draw it at an angle. We're going to draw it at an angle other than 90 degrees from AD. And so just then by the geometry of this problem, I know the hypotenuse of the triangle I just created. We already are given that dimension. That's 0.5 meters. So if I'm, the way this problem is set up, I know that I'm basically going to have a 45 degree angle where my perpendicular line crosses um, bar BD. And I know the distance from E to D is 0 0.5 meters, so that's going to make finding the perpendicular distance pretty easy. By the exact same logic, we can now look at what's happening at the tension in the cable BD. And if we look at our X 
and y components, we see that our x and y components, let's think about this, take your x component and run its line of action back like we've done here. We've started running it back. It passes right through point A. It can't have a moment. Plus it's in the xy plane and AD lives in the xy plane. It's not going to have a moment. By the same argument, component BY, if we run its line of action back, it's going to cross the AD plane. It's going to cross it right at point D, but it's going to cross that AD axis because they all live in the same plane. So we're not going to have a moment from the BX component or the BY component, but we still will have a moment from the BZ component of the tension at B. So pause the video and look at that for a little while. You'll also notice once you've come to terms with that we just have um, a moment from the vertical component or from the Z component, we can then draw a perpendicular line from anywhere along the line of action, but it makes sense to do it at B, and we can go straight back to A, D's axes, and we're going to hit that perpendicularly, and when we do that, we're again going to create a 45 degree triangle. Now, my drawing's not beautiful, but um, because of trying to get the axes, but that is a 45 degree triangle. The hypotenuse is one meter, and so we can put in our 45 degrees, and we can then look at actually writing the summation of moments in terms of these new distances. And putting it just in terms of variables, we know it has to be equal to zero. We know we're going to have the tension force in the z direction times this dB length that we established. And we're going to say minus the weight times the distance DE that we've established, D sub E. Now notice I put those in opposite directions. Didn't really define on here a positive or negative direction, but we know moments that act in opposite directions of each other have to be uh, subtractive from each other. And so we can pick whatever direction we want to call positive or negative. It's really up to you. If you want, we could say that we're going to put on here that we have an axis um, that's not, let's undo that and let's draw it more like our AD axis and I might say that I want to call a moment that goes in this direction positive and if I do that then you can see that the vertical component of tension at B, our BZ, that's going to rotate in that basically clockwise direction around axes AD and the W is going to rotate in a negative or counterclockwise direction. So just for that sign convention that we've drawn right there, that's where the positive and negative came from. We can obviously see they go in opposite directions and that's what's important because you just, if they go in opposite directions, they're subtractive from each other. Alright, so we can now write that out with numbers. Um, first we should establish that our perpendicular distance B is just going to be 1 times the cosine of 45 degrees, so that's going to be our 0 0.707. And then by the same argument, our perpendicular distance from E back to the axis would be our 0 0.5 meters times the cosine of 45 degrees, so that's going to be 0 0.707 meters divided by 2. And so now we can write our moment expression about the axis AD. So we will have our tension BZ, but let's not forget, we already know from the first half of this that that's just 0.67 TB. We'll multiply that by our 0.707 meters, and then we'll subtract from that our point, our negative 981 uh, times 0 0.707 divided by 2 because that would be our moment arm. And then if we just solve for TB we're going to end up again with 572 newtons which is exactly what we got when we solved with the vector analysis. 
Now, the vector analysis is a little bit easier to see. You don't have to worry about all of the moment arms of your x, y, and z components. Um, you don't have to get those perpendicular distances. At some point, it's going to be easier to do things with scalar than it is going to be to do it with vector. But in a problem like this, vectors are easier. So you want to practice both methods. And just keep practicing summing your moments because moments are your friend. Thanks for watching.